Hello everyone, welcome to Ra Online. Today, in the second installment on our approach to respiratory system, we are going to learn about bronchial asthma. So, let us start with what constitutes this disease called bronchial asthma. Bronchial asthma is a syndrome characterized by variable airway obstruction, which stress being on the term variable. There is a specific inflammation that occurs which results in airway hyperresponsiveness. So, the airway is going to respond excessively through excessive bronchoconstriction to various triggers which we are going to see shortly and that is going to result in reversible airway narrowing. So, this is a syndrome of variable reversible airway obstruction resulting from a certain specific type of inflammation which brings about airway hyperresponsiveness. Now, most patients with bronchial asthma are going to be atopic with allergies to dust mites, fur and pollen. They are going to have associated allergic rhinitis and atopic dermatitis also known as eczema. Now, when there is going to be onset of bronchial asthma in the childhood, the peak onset is around 3 years of age and there is going to be a slight male preponderance and most of these patients may end up being asymptomatic as they approach adulthood. However, when we look at the asthma which starts off from adulthood, so with adult onset bronchial asthma, there is no gender preference as opposed to the childhood onset bronchial asthma and unlike the childhood onset asthmatics who can become asymptomatic as they approach childhood. Here we are able to see that in adult onset asthma, they rarely become asymptomatic. And the severity is usually similar from onset. So, what does this mean? If at the outset the patient starts off having a severe asthma, now the patient is going to end up having a severe asthma throughout the course. Similarly, if a patient has a mild uh, asthma, then as the years pass by, it may not increase in severity. The severity is going to be similar to the onset throughout the natural course of bronchial asthma. Now, let us look at the various types of uh, asthma. These are the various phenotypes of asthma. So, broadly, there are four types, although there are a few others. The important ones are the atopic asthma, which constitute the broad bulk of the asthmatics. So, also known as the extrinsic asthma. Then you have the non-atopic or the intrinsic asthma, which is usually uh, late onset and adult onset disease without any allergic manifestations and then you have occupational asthma where there is exposure to a certain occupation related allergen which sets off the symptoms. Now, this uh, type of asthma is very peculiar in that the symptoms occur during the weekdays when the patient is exposed to the allergen at work and usually during holidays there is a significant relief of symptoms. And then you have the aspirin sensitive asthma which usually results on exposure to aspirin. This is also going to be associated with nasal polyps. So, this is the traditional severity classification of asthma that all of us are aware of, that all of us have been practicing. So, we have the intermittent and the persistent asthma. Persistent asthma is again further subdivided into three categories, mild persistent, moderate persistent and severe persistent. So, the important things which we take into consideration during this classification are a symptoms, the frequency of symptoms and B nighttime awakening. So, these are the two important ones. As you are able to observe from this table, the short acting beta agonist use which is actually the reliever medicine, the frequency of the reliever medicine use is actually fairly proportional to the symptoms. So, this row is going to mimic this row. So, it is easy to remember and then we are going to look at the interference with normal activity and the lung function and based on this uh, asthma was classified into four broad types intermittent bronchial asthma, mild persistent bronchial asthma, moderate persistent bronchial asthma and severe persistent bronchial asthma. Now, how would we categorize them based on symptoms? So, it is fairly simple. If the patient is going to be symptomatic throughout the day, then this is your severe asthma. If the patient is going to have daily symptoms but not symptomatic throughout the day, then that is your moderate persistent asthma. If the patient is going to have symptoms twice or less than twice a week, then that is intermittent asthma and between these two, more than twice a week but not daily, that is going to be your mild. 
it's a fairly simple all through the day is going to be severe persistent once a day which is daily episodes are going to be moderate two or lesser lesser than two episodes per week is going to be intermittent and between the two more than two episodes in a week but less than daily that is going to be mild persistent now when we look at nighttime awakenings again here almost throughout the week seven times a week is going to be severe more than once a week but not every night that is going to be moderate persistent three or four times a month that's going to be mild persistent and less than or equal to two times in a month is going to be intermittent so nighttime awakenings again every night in the week seven nights in the week is going to be your severe persistent more than one night in a week but not every night that's going to be moderate three to four times in a month is going to be mild persistent and less than or equal to two times in a month is going to be intermittent now the short acting beta agonist use is going to fairly mirror the symptoms it's going to be largely the same so i'm not going to repeat it so if you remember the symptoms and the frequency and how we classify these four types based on that it's going to be essentially the same so how about interference with normal activity as the name itself suggests in intermittent bronchial asthma as it is going to occur episodically and intermittently there are not going to be any interference with normal activities there's going to be a minor limitation in mild persistent some limitation in moderate persistent and significant limitation of day to day activities in severe persistent bronchial asthma now let's look at the lung function lung function is again largely preserved in both intermittent as well as in mild persistent bronchial asthma now when you look at moderate persistent bronchial asthma the fev1 is going to be more than 60 but less than 80 so it is going to be 61 to 80 percent and when you look at the fev1 in severe persistent bronchial asthma this is going to be less than 60 percent and when you look at fev1 by fvc ratio uh, this also there is a decline in this ratio the decline is by up to 5% if the decline is by more than 5% then it is severe persistent bronchial asthma so usually the intermittent bronchial asthmatics they have exacerbations about once a year and more than once a year two or more episodes in a year is going to be the case with persistent bronchial asthma